Okay, Alex, um, we would like to um, introduce you. So Alex is the founder of uh, the brewery that we're trying today. Um, and we're really, really lucky because he's going to give us some um, intro knowledge about the, the beer. Um, and then we're going to be super, super lucky because we're going to try it afterwards. Um, you guys have a piece of paper on your table. Um, you're not required to fill it out. But if you do want to fill it out, that's good. You can take your notes. Um, he would love to collect your comments back as well. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, we'll share you the email address um, because he wants to know particularly about the Hong Kong market um, and find out your, your taste preferences as well. Um, so DLAP and myself will be running around filling up your beers after the inputs. So without further ado, we can put our hands together for Alex. Before Alex starts, please make sure that you take pictures on what you're drinking. I'll be coming along the bottles around and whenever you're uh, posting them on social media, the hashtag is Nisos, Nisos with double S. Okay. Nisos beer. Nisos, but it's double S, not one S. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's like this in Greek, right? On the on branded as well, yeah? On the worksheet, I think. But. It is like that. Yeah. Nisos beer. Okay. Take pictures, upload hashtag Nisos beer. So Alex can see what we're doing because it's a small camera. Perfect. Okay, Alex, over to you. Nice t shirt, uh, Professor. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be around you. Uh, unfortunately, uh, not, not in, in, uh, in the physical world, but virtually. Uh, I would have hoped to be there with you uh, as uh, I would have, uh, I wish that everybody amongst you has a chance to to visit us in Greece and in uh, the island of Tinos where our brewery is located. I will try to start by saying that I will keep my presentation very short so that we can go to the beer tasting. And uh, since we are here for the beer, uh, primarily, but uh, I think it's a good idea for me to show you uh, and give you a bit of guidance and a direction of where we are, where we are, where I am uh, this very moment talking to you. So uh, we are like 8,600 kilometers away. Uh, that's that's uh, that's 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 quite a distance. I tried to to ask Google Map to calculate uh, and give me instructions on how to get to Hong Kong, and I think I found the uh, the weak spot. It uh, it collapsed. It could not give me any. It could not make out any direction. So uh, obviously we are Greece is part of the European Union, it's, uh, it's part of Europe. It's uh, actually uh, at the very south of, of Europe. Let me give you a little bit of, uh, let me come closer to Greece, which is this area, uh, um, starting from here. Let's do Al the PowerPoint, Al hold on. Yeah, Alex, I think you need to share your screen. All we can see is your beautiful face at the moment. Uh, I haven't shared my screen, did I? No. We can see that Alex saved for the occasion today. <laughs> yes, okay, that's a good idea. Let me share my screen then. I thought I had my screen shared. Okay. Would that be better now? That is better. Yeah. If you All right then. Okay, so yeah, I mean, this is, 
this is the map I wanted to share with you. I started uh, showing you the, the vast distance that uh, really separate us, uh, almost half the world. Uh, as I said, Greece is part of the European Union, it's part of Europe, and it's at the south part of Europe. This, this is our neighborhood here with Italy, you know Italy, uh, Turkey, you know Turkey, Egypt, Bulgaria, Serbia, uh, Croatia, Romania. So this is, this is our neighborhood here. And uh, Greece starts from here. Actually, this, this part used to be Greek and it was taken by the Turks. But uh, now at least uh, this is the, st the country starts uh, with the island. So it's, a, it's, it's mainly an island country. If we come closer, even closer to the archipelago, which is called Aegean, you will see that this is a paradise of islands, of little islands, about 3,000 of them, inhabited and uninhabited. So it's a very unique area. It's a bucket list area. Uh, it's one of those areas you need to see before you die. And uh, why is that? Because there's, there are a lot of islands, a lot of islands. So you can, if, you, if you sail, uh, it's hardly an area where you cannot see an island. You, you sail and always you have uh, a visual on, on, on land. And all those islands are kind of unique communities. They have their own personality. They share things. However, they have a lot of unique elements, their own personality, they have their, their own cuisine, their own architecture, and they are very proud of it. So it's an area worth visiting. And I do what we say, what we suggest is island hopping. So let me go closer to our neighborhood of islands. Okay, this is our neighborhood of islands. The most well-known island or in our neighborhood is Mykonos. Do you know Mykonos? Although I cannot see how many people know Mykonos. Okay, uh, well. How how many people know Mykonos? Um, there's one hand, two hands, All right. three hands, four, five, <laughs> six. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Mykonos is this uh, sort of one of the places to be if you are a, a sort of a, a, if if you're one of the lifestyle aficionados let's say, of the world. Uh, and uh, it's the most well-known island. Not necessarily the, the, the best looking one uh, or the most beautiful one, but actually is where you want to be if you're into, into the modern lifestyle. Okay, and then, and then there is our island, Tinos, Andros, and Syros. So the, this, this cluster of four islands, they were very close to each other, but still we are an island. If you see our island, this is it, on your right-hand side, you will see where I'm located at the blue dot at the moment and where the brewery is located at the red dot. So we are, a, as I said, an island and um, well, since you, I, I, before I start my presentation, I wanted to share a few pictures with you and welcome you to Tinos. And who, who would welcome you to Tinos? Of course, Professor Buchalis with his t-shirt, <laughs> his Nisos t-shirt. I mean, this is how it looks like in the area. I mean, you, you take the boat from Athens and you, you it's a big boat. And, uh, and you come to Tinos, to the port of Tinos, it's about, two to four hours, depending on the kind of boat you, you may use. Uh, big safe boats though. And uh, as I said, it's an archipelago of islands. 
so it's very lively and, uh, and very photogenic. Okay, and this is kind of the, the atmosphere that you see. I mean, this unique Aegean architecture, the white, uh, whitewashed uh, uh, houses. And this is, this is popular, this is people's architecture. No, uh, no, architect, no, no architect has designed those, highs, those houses. These are people designed houses. And uh, I mean, this, this neighborhood is, is really, nobody designed it to be like that. It, it, it is accidental that it became like that. So everybody built it something and you, you see how all these uh, different buildings came together to create a very beautiful, very unique uh, collective. I mean, we have a lot of beaches. And again, I'm using uh, a few photos sent to me by Professor Buhalis. We have a lot of chapels, a lot of chapels. The, 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 the island has a lot of chapels. Sandy beaches, blue waters, party girls and boys. I couldn't find the interesting boy photos. Lots of flowers and uh, nature. Uh, this unique Icelandic uh, architecture, this is, this is rather new. This is rather contemporary, but still we have a very unique architecture, as you can see. If you want to find more information about uh, the, this Tinian uh, Aegean architecture, you, you go into our site and you will find a lot of information. And this is to tell you where we got our corporate colors from. This is what inspired us to, 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 to get uh, this blue color that we have, our corporate color. This is the largest pilgrimage in uh, Orthodox church religion and uh, in Christian Orthodox re religion. This is uh, the Virgin Mary of Tinos. Okay, it's located in our island. Very, very popular. And uh, as uh, Professor Buchalis said, this is a Parea island. This is, this is what the Parea is. I mean, people uh, uh, sitting together and having a meze, having uh, a little bit of food and a beer and some ouzo and some wine. This is the kind of atmosphere that you see around the island, a Parea kind of atmosphere. And okay, and uh, farewell from Tinos again <laughs> by our protagonist, Dimitris Bucheles. <laughs> so let me now after this uh, this tour of our island, uh, you can find many more photos of uh, the island in our Instagram and Facebook and uh, site. If you if you care to see more more photos, but. Uh, I always suggest that you kind of uh, uh, visit us uh, in person and uh, have the chance to, to be here with us. It's a very interesting area if you decide to, to come to Greece and to Europe. So let me, let me just give you a little bit of background on Nisos. I will keep it very, very short. Uh, again, if, you, if you'd like more information about the brewery and about what we do, you can visit our sites. But in a short story, to keep a, a long story short, uh, there are 10 things that define Nisos. Uh, the first thing is our Cycladic origin and the fact that we are brewed in, the, in Tinos Island. This, this is basically the idea behind the genesis of, of Nisos, behind, behind the, the, the creation of Nisos. So, uh, the, the idea was to create a, a, a very big, in terms of reputation and quality, beer in a small island. So the idea was pretty much a contradiction in itself. Okay, create something very world-class, something 
very, very big in, in quality in a small island. And um, the, the second is the, the craft and artisanal element, DNA that Nisos has. The, Nisos is not an industrial brewery. It's a, it's a world-class craft artisanal brewery. Okay, so what we care is not cost efficiency, is really maximizing the experience we can deliver to our customers, to our consumers, maximizing the beer experience. That's why we are multi-awarded. We are the most, by far the most awarded Greek brewery and one of the most awarded European breweries of our size and age because we are a very young brewery, uh, unlike other European breweries. We started uh, less than a decade ago. And uh, basically, we, we are multi-awarded for our taste excellence. So all these uh, medals that you see on the visual on the right-hand side are uh, medals for taste excellence, nothing else, okay? The fourth thing is that we practice 100% natural brewing, which is what we call it clean label. So there's not, no artificial additives anywhere in our process. The other thing is, uh, is that we make beers that are better for you. I will talk a little bit more about that because this is a USP for Nisos. Uh, so we have pioneered a, 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 pro, a brewing process that creates a product which is very rich in, in uh, bioactive ingredients that are better for one's health. Then we always pra practice slow brewing. A, a great secret for making a good beer, a great beer is long brewing long maturation periods. To, uh, the latest thing we did is that we created a cellar and we there we aim to, 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 to have beers mature in constant uh, temperature and no light at all, dark environment uh, for more than 10 years. And we have 8,000 bottles of special beer that matures at the moment. So mat the maturation period, the time is very, very important in beer as well as other beverages like wine and whiskey. Uh, then we never pasteurize, we never thermally, thermally treat our products uh, with temperature. And this is to, we do this to retain our flavor and the impression of, consu the, of consuming fresh aromatic beer. We stabilize our beer using more innovative techniques than pasteurization. And uh, such more innovative techniques are, for example, uh, microfiltration and maintaining high antioxidants, high polyphenols inside the beer. These polyphenols, apart from being better for you, good for you, for human health, they are very, very good for the long life of the product. They are natural, natural antioxidants. Although we are craft and artisanal, and as I said, 100% natural, we are a, a, a also a brewery that practices very strict quality processes. We have the highest uh, standard uh, we, our, our brewery is uh, certified according to the highest standards in food safety. And this is, for those who know, the FSSC 22000. This is the highest uh, standard in food safety. And we are among the very, very few European breweries to have these standards. Then we are 100% family owned and independent, and this is by ideology, and we believe in uh, human-led entrepreneurship, th the kind of entrepreneurship that creates, that works around human, uh, does not dominate, does not buy out, 
sort of uh, initiates collaborations, initiates a value chain around it for the benefit of the people, the communities, the environment. So we are kind of a very, very uh, 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 passionate about responsibility and the responsibility towards all the stakeholders, our people, uh, our customers, our community, the environment, and we try to, to practice all the good practices in order for us to be delivering uh, value to, to all these stakeholders. Last but not least, our name is what else? It means island in Greek. So Nisos is, is what, what uh, is island, means island in, in Greek. Uh, I promise to talk a little bit about uh, our, and this is the last thing I will tell you about us before we go to the taste. Uh, about um, uh, the bioactive ingredients in, uh, in, in Nisus beer. Okay, uh, this is really important. Uh, lots of breweries and lots of brewers have been uh, talking about it and uh, have been saying that uh, beer is good for you and one, uh, one uh, bottle of beer every, every night is, is beneficial to your health. There is a historical campaign by an Irish brewery called Guinness, very well-known one belongs to a multinational uh, Diageo. Um, uh, one of the his their historic campaign was that uh, Guinness is good for you. What we did, uh, and we are the first ones to, to do that, is that we had this certified. So uh, we used the standard uh, and we asked the, the people, the, the scientists that you know, do this certification based on a standard to, to a cert rate, to measure, rate, and certify our beers. And by that, what we gain is that we, we can have a, a very uh, factual uh, proof that Nisos is higher in quality as a food product, as a beverage uh, for human health. And also we know how Nisos beer relates with other food products. So we know, for example, that Nisos beer has as many as antioxidants as red wine. Uh, so what really this is, is that what really what this certification is all about. Again, if you need more information, go to our site and you can find more, is that uh, our beers were taken and their composition was uh, tested against human cells. And, uh, and, the, and particularly its ability to neutralize a multitude of synthetic and natural free radicals. Uh, so the, 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 the objective was to test the ability of the composition of the beer composition to help human organism uh, cope with different difficulties. It all of us are experiencing because of our modern lifestyle. Okay, for example, could our composition help human body protect important biomolecules such as lipids from oxidative damage? Could they uh, help our body cope with uh, cardiovascular diseases and neurological disorders. There are protocols that uh, food compositions are tested against all that. And this is one of the key areas that R&D, food R&D 
is uh, is uh, developing nowadays around the world. Uh, so people are looking and in, uh, industry is looking for food products and beverage products that are doing beyond beyond giving you a great taste and uh, proteins and nutri nutritional value. We are looking for products that can do that and give you also some more health benefits. So there is a lot of talk with uh, antioxidants and polyphenols and uh, different other nutrients that micronutrients that we can find in foods and how these these uh, become medicine, preventive medicine for the human body. So we have proof that our beers uh, are, are delivering just that. They are delivering beyond great taste and beyond nutritional uh, values. They deliver health value to, uh, to human body based on primarily on their antioxidants, the, the, their content of polyphenols. I will tell you, that, for example, our red beer apocalypse, the one that we will try before last, maximized the score. So it could not go further than that. It got 20 on 20. Uh, seven before, the last beer that we will try, got 19 out of 20. Uh, Tholi got, again, 19 out of 20. Uh, the organic beer that we will try got 17 out of 20. And the Niso Spelsner got 16 out of 20. Uh, I'll give you uh, as a reference that uh, most industrial beers are between 9 to 12 at the best case. So we, are, we have a huge different, difference in, uh, in uh, the, the, the content of uh, antioxidants uh, in Niso's beers. And this is hands-on proof of a better quality product, not marketing talk. So this is, this is a little bit of a presentation I'm giving you about Nisos, and I urge you to, to go to nisos.pr if you need more information. So allow me now to go to the core of our presentation and talk a little bit about beer and then talk a bit about tasting beer. Ah, sorry, I prepared this slide to, to show you basically the methodology uh, of, uh, of the EFQ taste uh, testing. Uh, however, uh, th this, is, this, is, this is everything I, I, I talk to you about in, in this slide. Okay, tasting beer then. Let's, let's go into that. Okay, what is beer, guys? What is beer, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, what are the defining elements of beer? Okay, let's 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 see what beer is. Okay, there are five defining elements. The first thing is that it's an alcoholic beverage, and it's it, uh, it, you'd be happy to know that it's the first alcoholic beverage ever consumed by humans. And uh, it was discovered in many places a, a, across the world, China, Egypt, uh, Mexico, uh, at different points in time, just by chance. Someone left some sort of uh, grains outside, a uh, raindrop, and then uh, someone tried this water, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with the grains and felt nice. And that was beer, okay? It's very easy to, to make beer, very easy. At least uh, if you're not looking for the things that later brewing gave to the world, to humanity. But very simple beer is very easy to make. Okay, it's still humanity's most popular alcoholic beverage. It's compared to wine, it's huge. Uh, it's the third most popular beverage, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic after water and tea. So beer is huge. That's why it's the most industrialized beverage. And this industrialization 
has affected beer. A beer, as you will see in my presentation, is full of variety. It's full of uh, differences, uh, full of uh, tastes and different aromas and different tastes. Yet we have a world of homogenized beer, a, a, a yellow liquid. So that tastes more or less the same. This is not an inherent capacity of beer. This is a product of industrialization of this homogenized, this homogenized beer that we have mostly around the world. Uh, fortunately, craft brewers all around the, the planet are, are making sure that beer uh, restores its initial uh, variety and uh, wealth and uh, uh, experience. Okay, the third element that we need to remember is that beer is a, a product of alcoholic fermentation. So no fermentation, no beer. Okay, so if there is, uh, there's no fermentation, there's no beer. So it's uh, alcoholic fermentation of what? Of grain sugars induced by yeast. Okay, the, the fourth element is that it contains CO2 usually. Most of the times it contains CO2, 99% of the time. And the fifth element is that it's flavored by hops. Hops is a flower, I will be talking about hops later. So 99% of the beers in the world, they are aromatized by hops. It's not the only way, but uh, for some reasons, hops took over beer. Okay, the basic elements, the basic ingredients to create beer are five. Four, really, but uh, nowadays, because we are creative brewers, we have five. So we need malt. This is the body and soul of beer. We need hops. This is like the spice, the taste of beer. We need obviously water, okay? This is the integrity of beer and the purity of beer. Bad water is bad beer directly. And we need yeast. I will be talking about yeast. And then nowadays, not nowadays, I mean, uh, creative breweries, uh, uh, brewers uh, since, 15, the 15th century, they've been using other ingredients to differentiate their product and create more different flavor experiences. Uh, sugar, spices, and modern brewers, like the mega brewers, they, they are concerned about cost. So they live and breathe cost and how to minimize cost. And they have found millions of ways to drop costs and replace grains with other cheaper ingredients, for example, potato or other cheaper ingredients. Okay, so we have those as well. Basically quality beer, however, uh, is made out of grain and especially barley uh, and wheat. Uh, and this is, this is the top league of beer malted barley and wheat and wheat. Okay, so what is malt? Malt is a basic, basically some grain, okay, uh, that is processed so that we brewers can take it in our mass tank and mass it. And what we do in massing, we break sugars, we break uh, the, the, the uh, 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 starts, starts into sugars. And for us to be able to do that, we need enzymes in a natural way. We need enzymes. And how do we get enzymes from the nature? To get the enzymes, we need to take the grains from the field and malt it, make it malt. How do we make a grain, a barley, barley into malt? We process it. How? 
we steep it in water. We then let it germinate. And then as soon as it starts germinating, we again uh, warm it up with warm air. It's the process of kilning. And then we clean it and we, and th this is at the end of the process, this barley becomes malt. So when does barley become malt? As soon as it starts the germinating. And what have we done? We have cheated. We have lied to the barley kernel and we have made uh, sort of made the kernel think that it would sort of, it needs to grow somehow. It needs to, 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 to grow and produce a new plant. Uh, this is what we want because in, in, if we achieve to do that, then naturally the inside the kernel enzymes can be developed. And those enzymes are very important for us to be able to break the starch into sugar. If we just take barley out of the field and we do not you do, uh, do, do not, we do not do the malting process, then we will not be able to, to have sugars. And if we have no sugars, we won't be able to have alcoholic fermentation. And we, if we cannot have alcoholic fermentation, we cannot have beer. So the process of malting is very, very important. So malt is a processed product, a processed grain. It's not a grain by itself. Malt does not grow on fields. Barley grows or uh, wheat or whatever. And then we take it, we go uh, and we malt it and create more. There are many kinds of malts, many colors of malts. The way to, to color our beer, good quality beer, uh, like Nisos is adding different color of malts and different processed molds. Uh, this is the, the, the good way to do dark beer or red beer. The easy way is use caramel color like the industrial brewers do. But we use, this is our color palette, palette the, the different molds we can create. Now, water. Water is very important, it's 90% of the beer. Back in the old ages, not before the 19th century, brewers were dependent on their water so much that it would define the kind of beers they produce. So I wouldn't be able as a brewer to produce the beer of my dreams. I would be able to produce the beer the water of my territory dictates. This is not true. And in, in the in the in the present days, because we discover filtration, water filtration, and ever since all the good brewers, they actually uh, integrated water into their recipes. So beers like ours, their recipe starts with water and what salts and mineral elements the water should have to create the perfect Pilsner beer, or the perfect Porter beer, or the perfect Heller beer. So th this is where we start. Our process starts at the water. And we have the filtration systems uh, that replicate mother nature. And by that, we can add or take out different minerals in our water. So we can be creative and, uh, and, and uh, make different beers. Now, yeast, this is very important. We're, we're not the brewers. Let me tell you, yeast is the brewer. Okay, what we do is uh, actually we, we make yeast happy. We keep yeast happy. Unless yeast is happy, no beer, no matter what. So we have mainly three categories of, of yeast. Uh, 
top fermented, bottom fermented, and spontaneous fermented. It doesn't really matter. I'm just telling you that there are more than one yeast. And what yeasts, they do, all of them, what they do is they eat the sugars that we have created for them and they metabolize it. And they metabolize it in two elements, alcohol and CO2. So alcohol and CO2 in Nisus beer are not added. They are created by the process of alcoholic fermentation. So the, the, the CO2 you will taste in Nisus is natural CO2. The very CO2 it was produced when the beer was fermented. So uh, this is again very important, as well as alcohol. So yeasts are living creatures, really. Okay, and they are not. They they don't die every. Uh, I mean, at every batch, they 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 they, they create. A, each each brewery has its own culture of yeast. And we sort of take care of this culture and we use it to, to do multiple fermentations. Very interesting, the topic of yeast. Hops, as I said, this is the spice of beer. More than 174 different varieties have been registered of hops and a lot of terroirs of these varieties. So German SAS is not uh, it's not the same as Czech has sales. So lo lots of rooms for lots of room for creativity in adding aromas to your beer. And hopes, what do they deliver to beer? Three things. One, bitterness. Every I mean bitterness is the key word, is a key word for beer. Beer as a category is, a, is every beer is a, a little bit or more bitter. But they, I mean, this is if you don't like bitterness, you don't like beer. You have you heard about people saying, "Ah, I'm not a beer drinker. Uh, I, I can't consume beer." No, no, no. Please, I'll pass. I'm not a beer person. What they usually mean is that I don't like bitter taste. So bitterness is kind of associated with beer. And those who love beer, they love bitter taste. Not very bitter, maybe uh, mildly bitter. Okay, And there are many degrees of bitterness, as you are about to find out, and qualities of bitterness. So there's good bitterness and bad bitterness. Alex, can I interrupt yes. you for a minute? I can see a lot of thirsty people here and they cannot wait to, to try your beer. Yes. Okay. I will try to, 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 to keep it. Uh, so I can see them kind of looking into the beer bottles and say, wow. Okay. Do this. Good. Uh, thank you for telling me. When you're ready, right? So, sorry? When you're ready. When you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So. This is the brewing process. We produce the wort, we ferment, and we mature. Three stages. List of uh, maturation in Nisos beers is three or four weeks. These are the kind of beers, the families of beers existing around the world. Not just one beer, but many beers. At least two main categories. 79 styles registered and 14 families. And now let me just introduce the beer tasting, which is the last part of my presentation. And this is how we kind of uh, develop beer perception. We have some organoleptic factors, but not only, we have also some cognitive factors. So the history, the provenance, the price, the identity, the experience, of beers do affect our taste. And of course, we have the organoleptic factors, which are the, the factors that we will be analyzing today. This is how we, the organoleptic pre, uh, process uh, develops. So we first look 
we then smell, we then taste, and then we think. These, these are four, four uh, steps for trying beer. And this is stage by stage. So what would you do? And if you can start serving the first beer, please, the first beer, which will be, uh, we go from light to heavy. Uh, and this is uh, all day, Nisos all day lager. It's, a, it's an organic beer, gluten-free, organic, gluten-free, 4.5% alcohol. Okay, and it's, it's a, a, a perfect beer for the seaside for all day as its, na it names, its name uh, suggests. So what we do, how we start is basically what we do is we optically examine the beer, we see the beer, we watch the beer, we try to see the color, its transparency, the head, the CO2, then we smell it, okay? Then we swirl it, then we smell it again, then we drink. So drinking is number five, step number five. And then we try to detect the retronosal experience of the beer. So what we do is we actually hold our breath and release air through our nose. And then we have more uh, flavors and more aromas coming out of that action. Okay. Stage two, we just drive the, 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 the glass under our nose. Stage four, we really put our nose inside the glass. So one thing is to see if, if uh, there are aromas that are really coming out of the of of the of the uh, uh, of, uh, of the beer. Not all beers have those aromas, okay, and uh, strong aromas. And then when we swirl it and we smell it from the close inside the, the, the glass, then we get another round of aromas, really. There is no good and bad beer, by the way. There are beers, different beers for different occasions. A very aromatic beer you will not enjoy, for example, in, the, in a sandy beach in Tinos Island uh, early afternoon. No, you will enjoy it nighttime. Okay, so no, no good and bad beer. So its color, its, its beer has its own color and this Alex. is stratified. Alex. Okay, we have categories. Hi, Alex. Yes? I, we're, we've poured all number one. So everybody okay. inside the room has the first beer. Um, oh, excellent. Feel free to, whenever you're ready, to explain the tastes of those. All right. I will, uh, I will go into the taste. I will just tell you that uh, human, human taste is only, we have five human tastes, four really, plus umami. Nobody knows what umami is but it's some, some sort of a magic taste that makes it better. So it, it's either sweet or salty or sour or bitter. These are the four tastes we can recognize. That's it, guys. Okay? Sweet, salty, sour, bitter. The umami, sour and bitter. With, okay? And then there are some new tastes, for example, fatty, spicy, metallic, uh, carbohydrate and starch, but basically the, the four human tastes are sweet, salty, sour, bitter. All of the, the other uh, elements that we find in gastronomy and we say, for example, they are dry herbs or the beer has citrus or tropical fruits inside, or it's grainy or it's roasted or caramel. 
all these things are aromas. They are not tastes. They are sensations that we experience with our nose, really, not with our mouth. Okay, so be careful. T it's taste and aroma. There is the total of it is what we call flavor. Okay, so as as I said, you need to assess its beer. I'll keep it very simple. If it's sour, if it's bitter, if it's salty, if it's uh, sweet, and then you try to understand the aromas. For example, these are the categories, as you can see. Spicy or phenolic, earthly, herbal, floral, fruity, sugary, malty. Okay, these are the, 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 the aromas that you should be able to detect. Okay, and then let's try all the organic. Okay, so try to, if you have not already tried it, try to uh, use the process I described earlier. So everybody is trying number one, which is the organic mm -hmm. beer. So the first one, um, we're okay. also gonna walk around and pour number two at the same time. So just so you know, we're tasting. Okay. Okay, so basically number one, as you understand, is a golden, clear, bright uh, beer with aromas of flowers, sweetness, not very bitter, huh? not bitter at all, I would, I would say. It's a very low bitterness beer. Uh, a, a beer that it's... Uh, clear, bright uh, flowers, fruits, this, this kind of, uh, of beer, very easy drinking, very easy going. The interesting thing about this beer is fully organic and it's also gluten-free. So, and uh, the nose one is jasmine, uh, white fruit, white peach. And then the second nose is a uh, rose, honey, cereal, a bit of almond, this kind of sensations. Um, just around the room, is there anybody who would like to ask any questions about the first beer? If you would, you can raise your hand and we'll take the microphones over. The first, I think we've talked about the first one. You've poured one and two. So any, any questions about the first one? Yep. Hello, Alex. Hello. This is Robert. Hello, Robert. Thank you so much. And uh, please forgive us for our impatience. You know, when we facing the alcohol and the uh, knowledge. Robert, Robert, can you do me a favor and, and look at this camera? Because okay, over there. there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your presentation. I think it's really, really good. Very professional and uh, full of passions with alcohol, you know, uh, when we're facing this, I mean, the, the alcohol and the knowledge means, you know, the result, everybody cannot wait anymore. Thank you so much. And uh, don't be sad. That means your alcohol is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would like to say uh, something more later. Thank you so much first. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. So I just go back. Is there any other questions about the first beer? 
No, let's move on to the second one, if that's okay, Alex. So we'll go Absolutely. on to the second number two, second beer. Okay, same process, uh, really. Now, this is a little bit different. Uh, I think what you must detect is the difference in, in bitterness right away. This is a much more bitter beer. It's ar around uh, 10, points more bitter than the previous one you tried and it's a bit stronger uh, so you get a strong cereal flavor you you get some herbal bitterness uh, you can feel the hopes uh, this is also a beer that's uh, that with different texture, mouthfeel. It's a more full-bodied beer. Uh, the color also is uh, golden. So we have uh, some tones darker. And uh, I don't know how you, the beer was poured, but the, the foam is denser. Uh, it's white. It's uh, rich. Okay, so the aftertaste of this beer is a bit bitter and drier and uh, it stays with your mouth hopefully if you if you like bitter beers you like that this these beers are very very good to to pair with food because they the, their bitterness cuts through the taste of uh, food and uh, oils and cleans your palate, prepares you to for the next bite. So the, let's pour beer number three. Okay, so moving on to number three. Yes. So the first uh, kindly, kindly number three. If you can gently, very gently. Otherwise, we will have accidents. If we can swirl the bottle a little bit because this is a hazy beer and uh, the haziness of the beer comes from the yeast. So uh, a yeast which is suspended inside the beer tank is, all, is driven all the way to the bottling line and it's, it becomes part of your beer. It, it comes to your house, it comes to your bottle. So you need, I mean, gravity would push this yeast at the bottom, so you need to swirl it. I am very sorry, but I forgot to say that we are a pet friendly household here. So uh, our, our pet have, uh, have a voice. So maybe you hear a little bit of barking, forgive us for that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, so this is the first hazy beer that we are trying. And as I said, this hazy element comes from the yeast. So it's, it's, a, it's a beer which is very, very nutritionally beneficial, especially for the ladies, and also very, very high in antioxidants. 19 out of 20, very, very high. And this is, again, a golden beer. It's not that clear because it's hazy. And the aromas are a bit stronger. They are aromas of flowers and fruits. There is a bit of sweetness, more sweetness of the cereals. 
so it's it's a, it's a bit of uh, it's it's a, it's a it's uh, it's the closest you can come uh, to our brewery without being in our brewery. So if you if you come to the brewery, you will uh, ask to taste beer directly from the tank. So this is the closest the closer that we can be to that experience. Uh, so it's it's a bit as I said, golden color color a bit orangey. Uh, bright amber, okay. The, the 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 foam is a bit vanilla, not so white. It's creamy, um, and upon serving, you will obviously recall aromas, heavier aromas of uh, grains, seeds, dry hay, some brioche. Uh, French brioche, honey notes, and then uh, the second nose would give you fruits, would give you yellow fruits. It's uh, also aromatically more intense than the previous beers. Uh, and it's sort of the, 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 the aromas are in the neighborhood of the pastry and brioche and this, this kind of of uh, universe. Okay, uh, and then if we can go, I don't know. I mean, uh, if we if we're done with uh, with the third beer, I don't know. I, I cannot uh, assess the pace of serving and uh, tasting and things. You should be taking the time to clean your palate between the beers with some water or some crackers. Sorry, I didn't mention that. I should have. So you you normally would take some time to to clean your palate, and uh, in beer we do not use a, a spitting bucket. We drink our beer. We don't spit it out like we do in wine. Do you know why? why <laughs> <laughs> the reason is because one of the things that we need to assess in beer and assess it very well i mean experts would analyze it is the the quality of bitterness the 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 level and the quality of bitterness and for us to be able to do that we would need to swallow the beer because the bitterness receptors in our mouth cavity are at the back of our tank. So the good or bad news, depending on the perspective, is that we need to drink our beer to assess that, unlike wine. And although I'm a, a great lover of wine, I've done a lot of work for, for, for wine as well in my previous career, I must tell you that the, the, beer, the, the, the aroma spectrum of beer is far greater than the aroma spectrum of wine uh, and taste spectrum. For example, we have, uh, we have um, uh, uh, beers that taste uh, like, for example, coffee. I don't know. And they, they don't have to contain coffee. Okay, they taste like coffee. Uh, and or uh, I don't know, they're sour beers in uh, in wine sour wine is bad wine anyway this is another discussion okay so everybody's are going we... number four now okay so this is a red beer as you can see there is a different color um and can we ask is this darker color coming from more kiln time so you're roasting your, your grain. Exactly. So uh, you, the magic word is roasting the barley. And this is, as I said, how good beer delivers color by roasting malts, roasted malts. There are a number of processes. I don't want to go into details, but this is how we deliver color using malt. Okay, so this is a red beer. It's an Abbey style, old European 
style of the 16th century. This is a modern interpretation of uh, an abbey style double ale beer. This is a different fermentation from the three previous ones. This is a top fermented beer, unlike the three previous ones that are bottom fermented. And this is completely, completely different than the other ones. Uh, you could probably detect some spicy, uh, so, some spicy elements, aromas, and these are beyond uh, barley and hops, mainly the source of those aromas uh, originate in the yeast. This is the first time this is happening. All of the previous three beers, yeast is indifferent. It's a clean-based yeast. Now we have a yeast that takes part into the taste of the beer and delivers uh, some, uh, some very particular aromas that uh, can only be delivered by the yeast, these phenolic spicy aromas. Again, uh, the nose is very aromatic. There are some citrus notes, mainly orange, and then at the second, the second uh, phase, the second nose is about caramel, licorice, honey, spices, nutmeg, cloves, okay? Some boiled fruit, dried fruit, this kind of palettes. It's very aromatically intense in the area of caramels and dried fruits. It's creamy, soft, the carbonation is light, lighter than uh, the previous ones. Okay. Uh, so a different uh, yeah, so um, the participant may not notice that um, uh, for Beer number four and five, you uh, told us uh, to bring it to a warmer temperature to serve. Why is exactly. that? Exactly. Because Usually we drink beer, chill, and put it in the fridge. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, the, I believe uh, uh, number four is, tastes really good. So can you explain more on the temperature, serving temperature? Yes, serving temperature is very important in, in beer. And if we uh, I want to, to do a sophisticated tasting, we need to control uh, temperature very closely. However, beer styles uh, can be enjoyed at different uh, temperatures. Beers like uh, aromatic beers, I, I'll give you a rule of thumb, which is a generalization. Uh, uh, beers that are very aromatic are usually not drunk cold. Generally, the best temperature to enjoy a lager beer or a Pilsner beer is uh, uh, approximately three to five degrees Celsius. In uh, Greece, uh, you'd find industrial beers pushing people to enjoy beer at uh, zero temperatures and or even below zero. But in, in this case, really, drink water. I mean, you cannot understand anything about taste and aromas of beer. And usually beers that do not have taste and aromas, they want people to enjoy them very cold because they have nothing to say about uh, this plain, mainly water with some of flavors coming from pasteurization that want to be covered up. Uh, if you want to discover that, for example, try to, to get a, an industrial, big industrial lager and enjoy it at room temperature, you will not be able to enjoy it. You will detect a lot of bad flavors. Uh, okay, so basically beers that are aromatic, we enjoy at room temperature. So beers like uh, Apocalypse before, IPAs, different, uh, different special beers like stouts, porters, we, we enjoy at room temperature and try to enjoy them as we enjoy red wine. 
so the basically why we drink them is not to to uh, to uh, to cheer up is to enjoy the taste, to enjoy the aromas, to try to detect aromas and taste. And to do that, we need the temperature to be uh, at room temp uh, uh, approximately seven to 12 degrees, maybe 14 degrees. This is the best temperature to enjoy beer, aromatic beer. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Alex. So um, now we can move to wine number five. Yes. And this is again a different beer. This is a seven, this is called seven Beaufort. The Beaufort scale is a is a scale to measure if you if you are a sailor, if you do sailing, you you know that Beaufort beer is a may is a is a is a scale we measure the, the wind strength, so the knots, so how many knots of, of the speed, the speed of the winds, we measure in in a, in a Beaufort scale. So seven Beaufort is uh, close to a storm, uh, and uh, this is seven. Uh, this is really uh, how we got the inspiration of uh, of this beer because uh, in our neighborhood of islands. This is the most windy spot of the Aegean Sea. And we usually have high winds, uh, high speed winds. So basically, uh, Seven Beaufort came uh, to me and my son when we were traveling with our boat from uh, Naxos to Tinos. And we had a very, very strong storm. And we said, OK, I mean, we will uh, uh, commemorate that uh, naming a beer seven Beaufort. So this is a strong beer, seven percent alcohol. You would enjoy with a dark chocolate or with a glass of whiskey or good malt whiskey. And this is totally different, totally dark, almost black. Uh, it it would remind you of espresso, a uh, cold espresso coffee, uh, with uh, okay. Uh, a long finish, uh, and then you would have a nose of dark coffee, dark chocolate, dark fruit, and wood, earth, earthly kind of uh, uh, aromas. So this is dark chocolate, earthly kind of, uh, of beer. It does not contain chocolate, okay? It only it contains is. Uh, and the chocolate sensation comes from the barley, again, roasting, and caramelization of the molds. No, no added chocolate inside. <laughs> okay. So, and this is a beer, obviously, you wouldn't enjoy uh, at 12 o'clock uh, at a swimming pool. Okay. You would enjoy it at home in the evening or in a bar with a bar, as I said, or after dinner, uh, if you want to close your dinner with a bit of bitter uh, dessert. Or you would enjoy it with um, a, some, some, uh, some heavily roasted uh, uh, meat, a steak burned outside. So this kind of uh, of experience. Does it make sense? Yeah, I believe uh, what like uh, as you said, right? Number five, the first thing I think about is the grill steak to pair with. Grilled steak. Yeah. Um, so Alex, we might pass it over to questions from people in the room. So any of the beers that you guys have tried, if you'd like to ask questions about any of the processes, um, maybe you can put your hand up and we'll pass you a microphone. Very good. Um, maybe while we wait for people to think about their questions, um, can you help 
us just clarify the difference between lager, beer, and ale as well? I, th I think you've put yourself on mute. So. Yes. Yeah, uh, okay. Right. Okay. These are the the two main categories of beer: ales and lagers. So, as I said, basically, ales are top fermented beers. And uh, lagers are bottom fermented beers. They, uh, there's no better category. Uh, all of these categories contain uh, very good beers and very bad beers. Uh, usually, uh, I mean, ales are beers that are mostly, uh, let's say, a product of uh, the British American brewing tradition uh, and lagers are beers that are uh, more European, more North European of a more uh, North European uh, tradition. Let me tell you that uh, before some time, 17th century, all beers were ale beers. So uh, ales were the only beers we had. So it would be ales, uh, hazy ales, and uh, usually not very pale, but red to dark. This, this was the majority of beers, unlike today. Now, the invention of lagers was a disruption in the beer world. It was a disruption because someone uh, managed to produce a pale color beer, which is transparent and a bit and more drinkable than ale. And that was the, the beginning of lager, the lager period. Lager requires two things. One, soft water, which in Europe at least, it's not, uh, in, in Europe, we have hard waters. Uh, this is the general rule. Soft water is uh, not very frequently uh, a present of nature. In Greece, we have some soft waters. Uh, and then what else do we require? We require temperature control. So unless we can control our temperature, we cannot brew lagers. Lagers are very, very difficult and demanding to brew. So home brewers, they would do 90% ales. Why? Because at, in my home, in my room, we cannot, I cannot control accurately the temperature. So I need something that I can create at room temperature. So I cannot do a, a, a lager fermentation. Lager fermentation takes a lot of technology to do. And uh, basically temperature control. We are, as a, as a craft brewery, when we started especially, we, are, we were heretic. We are one of the very, very few to start doing lagers and not IPAs. The people would think that we are crazy, but we said we want to basically uh, do craft lagers. We want to, uh, uh, this is a lager world. So we want to, 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 if we want to make an impact, so we need to make lager better. And this is the most difficult beer to brew because uh, you cannot hide your mistakes into the aromas of, the strong aromas of hopes, which if you add a lot of hopes, nobody will understand anything. In, in lager, this is not the, the idea. So uh, uh, 
lager in laggers in the way they are more creative it's a more creative category why because you have a lot more space a clean base upon which you can build as a brewer and create an experience ales are usually not very clean because of the yeast the yeast uh, develops esters uh, a, a, a category of aromas that really create a, a dominating base, not a clean base for, for uh, the brewing techniques and the hopes to shine. But both categories can produce excellent beers, excellent beers. And uh, a, hybrid, a hybridization of those two categories is Belgian beer. Belgians have been very, very creative with beer. And they've kind of married the European tradition with the Anglo-Saxon tradition and created different, different uh, sort of hybrids. Well, very thank interesting. Thank you for your clarification. Uh, we have one question from the participant. Uh, for wine number three, uh, on the tasting note, we have the word Kela, K-E-L-L-E-R. What does it mean? Okay, Keller, very good question. This is a, the, the category of, uh, of, uh, of uh, beer. It's a, it's a category of beer. Uh, and uh, what usually, what it means is, it means cellar. So this beer is, a, is a, as a, uh, probably 18th century beer style. A European beer style, and it means cellar. So it's the clo uh, nowadays is what it usually says about the brewery is that the brewery is making an effort to give you a cellar experience, an experience of visiting their brewery. So cellar beers are uh, the, the word the, the word cellar means cellar. Um, we might just quickly, is there any other questions from you guys here? Anything you'd like to ask? No, if not, then... Yeah, so uh, thank you, Alex, for your time today, uh, showing us the beauty of Tinto Island and the uniqueness of your miso beer. And also we have, I believe, um, most of us, uh, should be all of us, uh, have a wonderful uh, wine tasting journey for this uh, one and a half hour. So thank you very much again, uh, Alex. Uh, oh, quickly, we, one, one question. Quickly, one question. Yeah, sorry. Uh, where can we find these beers in, uh, in Hong Kong? <laughs> well, uh, Levant, the, the, uh, you can order online uh, from the Levant uh, online marketplace. Yeah, I can tell you more details. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was a pleasure for me to, to be part of your uh, great group and thank you for your professionalism and uh, uh, the, the quality of, of this uh, tasting uh, of the organization. Thank you all. Thank you, Professor Buchalis. Thank you, everybody. Uh, this is my mail. You can see my mail. I'll be very, very happy to receive uh, any notes you might have taken and any feedback on, uh, on our beers as well as receive questions or, uh, or, or requests for me to help you plan your visit to Tinos Island and uh, Cyclades and Greece. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Definitely, we, we, we crave to go to visit Tino Island. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Any, anybody who wants to find the beer, we'll just write it up on the whiteboard over here. If you want more as well, I'm sure you can help yourselves. <laughs> okay, cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Bye-bye.